Hi, and welcome to this series in organizational agility. In today's episode, we are going to talk about organizational patterns. I find this interesting because it's very rare you can find resources that tells you about the different organizational patterns that they've used to create and shape their organization. Now, I'm going to start with making two axioms. The first is, there is no thing as the end destination when it comes to organizational patterns. Each pattern carries it with it a couple of pros and a couple of cons. And basically, you need to understand at what stage of maturity that you involve and include which pattern. The second axiom is that clarity in roles helps drive a responsibility culture. And this can be useful at some stages of your development because this helps build trust. I trust you in doing this and you trust me in doing that. Now let's start by taking a look at a pretty typical journey of maturity. It starts with chaos. And this is the phase that Regardless of the greatness of your initiative, it just seems to fall down into pieces. And then you get to a phase of functional competence. You start to build functional skills that can do things. The third stage is when you get flow optimization going. This is where you shorten the time to market across teams and inside teams. And at the final stage, you get value optimization. And at this stage, we're not really concerned about how we solve the problem. We're here to solve customers' problems, and we do that fluently. Now, there are a couple of patterns that I'd like to introduce you to. If we take the early stages here as an example, there is a typical organizational pattern that involves the line manager, where you basically say that the line manager is a manager of whole teams, maybe two up to three teams. But that's in contrast to a line manager being responsible for a certain set of competences across teams. The upside of this pattern is that this creates an alignment of improvement. The, the line manager and the team are in the same boat, and they're there to help improve the team. The second pattern that I'll introduce you to, and you probably observe that this isn't there when it's not working, is clarity and ownership of services. This means in the early stages, being clear about which teams that owns which service and take responsibility for them. Of course, as you evolve on your maturity journey, this responsibility will shift. But remember, this can be a useful pattern at the early stages. The final two patterns I'll introduce you to, and which we have found very useful, is value streams. So value streams is the pattern that you use when you get multiple teams, teams of teams, and you will not align them in a certain direction. A value stream shares a couple of things. A mission, like proudness, why we're here, a set of priorities, a rhythm, and responsibility towards a certain customer segment. Inside the value stream, there's another pattern, which is something we call a leadership triad. And the pattern is basically taking a leadership stance on who, what roles leads the value stream. This normally, in a tech organization, involves three different roles. A product leadership role, whose responsibility it is to maximize value. An architectural role, whose responsibility it is to realize the architecture that supports the value delivery. And people and skills leadership role, whose responsibility it is to develop the competence needed in order to get the value out. Now, this is important because if these pull in completely different directions, the organization will do the same. So this pattern is there to ensure that these people pull in the same long-term direction 
and thereby enable their surrounding to do the same. So to summarize, organizational agility is about creating the capability to evolve your organization and making it fit for purpose as it evolves its maturity. It's basically to create the capability to nudge your maturity journey ahead one step at a time.